As we hit 4 o'clock on this Thursday, it's a developing situation playing out in Greenwood Village. It was earlier today that a suspected bank robber ran into a hotel, this after exchanging gunfire with Greenwood Village police. Police had responded to the bank robbery call at about 10.45 this morning. That's when the suspect ran from the scene with officers chasing. Officers say the suspect then ran into that nearby hotel. Police have now evacuated the hotel and continue to try to make contact with the suspect. The situation continues to play out. We'll keep you posted as things develop throughout the afternoon and evening. It was five years ago today that someone murdered a 17 year old girl in her Colorado home and investigators still don't know who killed Maggie Long, but they do think that someone out there does know. Sheriff's deputies, CBI agents, they all spread out across Park County today trying to find anybody who knows anything. Nine News reporter Cole Sullivan checked in with them, investigators, as well as Maggie's family. And Jenny, Maggie's family is still in disbelief. Her sisters are. This was a horrible crime. Investigators think Maggie interrupted a group of people trying to rob her family home. They held her captive, then set the house on fire with her inside. In cemeteries, time stands eternally still. But the world continues on without Maggie Long. I think it's one of those shocks that kind of comes and goes. Five years ago, investigators say a group of people brutally murdered the 17 year old inside her home in Park County. Now her sisters try to imagine Maggie's life if her time hadn't stopped. What kind of auntie would she have been? Probably a really good yeah. one. And even just like little things like new music comes out like mm -hmm. she would. I, I'm sure she would have loved the new Taylor Swift as they grieve. I was wondering if we could put up a flyer for the Maggie Long Homicide. Park County's lone detective, Wendy Kippel, keeps working the case. It's the fifth anniversary of Maggie Long's murder. Has it been that long? It has, unfortunately. There's no new information, no good leads, no sign of who killed Maggie. But she believes someone in this county knows something. I can't believe that nothing has been said up to this point. Eventually, somebody's going to break. Just a trickle of new information could help solve the murder. That's what keeps Kippel going. The hunt, the hunt for the killer that murdered Maggie. It's I'm not going to give up on it. Even five years later, it's like there's really no way to get used to this. No way to get used to seeing your sister's face on a flyer or know the people who did this are still out there. It's not right. She deserves justice and deserves to have time to live her life herself. Instead, her sisters try to live it in her place. It's kind of how we try to move forward, you know, just bring that that spirit of kindness and inclusivity um, to our lives for her. The FBI categorized this as a hate crime a couple years ago. At one point, the sheriff's office released sketches of possible suspects. Now the detective tells me they're backing off of those sketches. They don't think they're likely to be that accurate. We do remember from learning about Maggie, she was a very special young lady, but it's when you think of a small town and a mystery that big, mm -hmm. that's got a weigh on everyone. It was interesting being out with the detective today as she was handing out flyers because everyone knew this case. They just all didn't know it had been five years yeah. since it happened. I had the same reaction to learning it had been five years. Yeah, We've been covering this story for too long. And they're still looking for leads. Yep. Cool. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's turn our attention out of the forecast. It was a beautiful afternoon across Colorado, across Denver, really. But Kathy, it sounds like we got some big changes coming our way. Jenny, we do. You and I were talking about this. It's hard to believe it's December. Right? I know. I, I know. know. I know. And mid 60s, even some 70s in eastern Colorado today. That is just crazy talk. And you know it's not going to last. And it's not. These high clouds you see coming in, that's the leading edge of a storm system that's going to bring big changes to the state. A little bit hazy out there, a little bit of a wind shift from the east. Mountain snow will turn heavy in the next 24 hours. Winter weather and travel advisories have been posted. High and mid-layer clouds are coming in ahead of this system, which will cross Colorado rather quickly. But due to the placement of the low and the high that's centered over us now, the pressure gradient will increase, and so will the winds tonight, unfortunately. Look at these current readings along the front range. 63 in Denver, almost 70 in Lamar, 49 in Eagle, a chilly 34 in Steamboat. Gusty winds are starting over the higher passes but will translate down to the surface. We go under a high wind warning tonight at 8 o'clock through 5 o'clock tomorrow for southwest winds.
winds 30 to 40 miles per hour with gusts to 60 and 75 miles per hour. The worst of it will be probably between about 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. tomorrow. So batten down the hatches, bring the small dogs in tonight, put a rock on the garbage can litter. Don't put your garbage out at all tonight because the wind is going to be the story tomorrow. Temperatures sliding out of the 50s into the 40s by dinner time. And in Maine weather, we're going to detail the amount we're expecting in terms of that heavy mountain snow forecast and difficult travel. I'll explain what I mean by that as well. Okay, Kathy, thank you. The American Civil Liberties Union Foundation of Colorado is now suing a Denver police detective for his role in creating a bare bones warrant that ended up not finding anything investigators were looking for. But it did traumatize a grandmother who has lived in her Montbello home for 40 years. Back in January this year, Denver police were looking for a stolen truck that had been stolen from a downtown Denver hotel. A SWAT team was sent to search for stolen guns, cash, and that truck. They damaged the doors of her home as they rummaged through Ruby Johnson's house. The ACLU says the DPD detective relied too heavily on find my iPhone pings and not on any actual on the ground police work. Again, police found nothing they were looking for at Ruby's home. This warrant should never have issued. It should never have been approved. The SWAT team should have stayed home and the detective should have maybe done some more investigation. A Denver police spokesperson says they, quote, sincerely apologize for any negative impacts from the warrant. They say SWAT was involved because guns may have been in the home, but it's worth mentioning again, they were not found. The Denver police chief ordered an internal investigation and says there will be additional training for both officers and the DA's office on warrants that are based on phone applications. A spokesperson for the Denver District Attorney's Office says in a statement that they signed off on this because they believe there was enough info for the search based on the facts that were provided by DPD. A spokesperson for the Denver judge who signed the warrant declined to comment. We'll hear more from Ruby and her family about the effects of this SWAT warrant tonight at 9 and 10. In Aurora, police are still looking for at least two suspects after a shootout near the Del Mar Park area. Police said the suspects fired multiple rounds at officers. Now, none of the officers were hit, but they did damage four patrol cars in the shootout. Police say it all began about 945 last night. That's when they started to follow what they said was a stolen car with two people inside. When they pulled into a parking lot, police say that's when the suspects started firing multiple rounds from inside the car. The officers returned fire. The suspects then tried to get away, but were met by more officers. The suspect shot at them as well before driving off. Police say they later found that stolen car at East 10th and Lima after it had crashed. Well, near that scene, police did find someone under the age of 18 who they arrested on active warrants, but they aren't sure whether they had any involvement in the shootout. Again, police are still searching for those suspects, and they're asking anyone near the area of 10th and Lima to check their doorbell cameras for between 945 and 11 o'clock for any video or anything that might be helpful. Again, a total of five officers fired their weapons. All of them are now on administrative leave, part of standard procedure. The number of same-sex couples uh, or households in the United States has now crossed the 1 million mark for the first time. According to data from the Census Bureau, there were more than 1.2 million same-sex couple households across the country in 2021. That's up from 540,000 in 2008, an increase of 120 percent. About 59 percent of those same-sex couples reported being married. The number of married same-sex households started to outnumber unmarried households in 2016 following the Supreme Court's 2015 landmark ruling that legalized gay marriage across the country. The release of this new data coincides with the passage of the Respect for Marriage Act in the Senate Tuesday with a vote of 61 to 36. The bill now heads back to the House for a final vote before it will go to the president. And President Biden said he will sign this, therefore codifying federal protection for marriages of same-sex couples. Millions of people around the world are living with HIV. And today on World AIDS Day, the Biden administration offers some new strategies to end the AIDS epidemic. And we're closing in on the nine news parade of lights coming up on Saturday. And this year, there's a new event that's part of the parade. It's the first ever Jingle Jog Run.